This is the second video about atomic spectra. In the first video, you saw how the Bohr model of the atom was used to explain how atomic spectra are formed. In this video, we'll be looking at some of the key features of atomic spectra and looking at how we can use the Bohr model in more detail to explain those features. And I'll be giving you some tips about how to ensure that in the examination answers, you put the correct level of detail in. So first of all, just a bit of revision in terms of the appearance of emission spectra and absorption spectra. So an emission spectrum consists of coloured lines, a small number of coloured lines on a black background. Absorption spectra consists of a small number of black lines on a coloured background. What doesn't show quite so clearly in this diagram is that uh, emission spectra very often, indeed absorption spectra as well of course, uh, the spectra very often the lines will actually converge or get closer together towards the high frequency end of the spectrum. That isn't very clearly shown here, but it's something that you are expected to recall and be able to explain as it is a feature of many spectra. The other thing that again you won't see so easily in this spectrum is that quite often the lines appear in particular sets or groups and that's a feature that will need to be explained as well. OK, so there are probably five key facts that you may be asked to explain in examination questions. And three of them are relatively straightforward to achieve, and these are shown here. So we should be able to explain why atomic spectra consist of lines, why every element has a unique spectrum, and why the lines in an absorption spectrum occur at the same frequency as those in an emission spectrum. There are two much harder ideas which occur much less frequently in examination questions, but uh, nevertheless, we need to be prepared to be able to have a bash at these as well. And these are these two more hidden features, if you like, of uh, absorption and emission spectra, that very often the lines appear to converge at high frequency, get closer together, and that they often consist of several groups or sets of lines. OK, let's look at perhaps the most fundamental of those questions. Uh, and I'm going to do this for emission spectra. You need to be aware that the examiner can ask you both to discuss emission spectra or absorption spectra. And you need to be extremely careful about checking which is required. Obviously, if I'm talking about electrons falling from high energy levels to low energy levels, that's relevant to emission spectrum. But if you are talking about absorption spectra, you need to be describing electrons jumping from lower energy levels to higher energy levels. So I'll do this for emission spectra, but do be prepared to be flexible in the way that you use the information in examination questions. Whenever you answer these questions, you're encouraged to draw a diagram. And the diagrams will be slightly different depending on what feature you are trying to explain. So here, this diagram is quite a good way of being able to show why you get a small number of coloured lines. Obviously, if you are answering exam questions, you're probably not going to worry about drawing in colours in beautiful uh, felt tip all over your exam questions. Uh, remember that when the exam papers are scanned in, they're scanned in, in in black and white. So it's completely pointless. However, you may well want to show the lines as features of the spectrum, as I've done here. So what's most important is that you do show the energy levels of the electrons, and you do show some of the jump that electrons make from high to low energy levels. So why do we get coloured lines? Well, you need to explain or show on the diagram that electrons are losing energy as they drop from higher to lower energy levels. That energy is emitted as light. If you want to be very precise, you can say as a photon of light. The reason that we get particular frequencies of light and therefore sharp lines is that there's a link between the energy lost and the frequency of radiation. And it's very important that you mention that equation or describe it in words as I've done here to make the link between the energy lost and the frequency of light being obtained. And it's vitally important to somewhere make a link between the single line on the spectrum and the fact that that line corresponds to just one particular 
an electron jump between a high and a low energy level. Sometimes you may be asked a further question, which is, well, why do you get lines, but also why do you get a small number of lines? And as you can see, the answer is going to be something along the lines of the fact there's a limited number of energy levels, and hence a limited number of possible jumps that electrons can make. OK, a second and relatively straightforward explanation that you may be asked to produce is this one, why every element has a unique emission spectrum. Again, it could be asked in the context of absorption spectra as well. And this might be the kind of diagram that you might come up with here. Again, I've shown the energy levels for a particular element, but I've also illustrated a possible second set of energy levels for a second element. So have a look at the diagram that I've drawn and think about what features of those two diagrams you might want to include in an explanation. Pause the video while you do that, and then I'll show you what the explanation is that will ideally be produced on your answer paper. OK, so obviously we can see from the diagram that electrons are in fixed or quantized energy levels. Um, and it's important to realize that those energy levels will be different for each element. So each element will have a unique pattern of energy levels. And the energies, therefore, of those energy levels will be different, as will the gaps between them. And so because electrons lose energy as they drop from higher to lower energy levels, because the gaps are unique to a particular element, you'll also get a unique set of frequencies of radiation being produced. And it's very important to use that equation, delta E equals HF, wherever possible. The emission spectrum, of course, consists of lines, so you'll want to get across the idea that the movement of electrons between two energy levels will produce just one line on the spectrum. So this will cover all of the key features required in an answer. And the third of the relatively straightforward questions you may get asked is why do you get lines in absorption spectra and emission spectra occurring at the same frequency? And here's the kind of diagram that you might come up with. To be honest, again, uh, this diagram in itself with suitable labels will probably be enough to get you several marks in itself. One thing that is missing from this particular diagram is any kind of scale on the vertical axis. It's a good idea to make it clear that the vertical axis actually shows you the energy of the energy levels. OK, if we're answering this question, then clearly we need to discuss both absorption and emission. So you'll need to bring in slightly more information than in previous answers. You need to explain that electrons can lose energy when they drop from higher to lower energy levels, but also gain energy as they're excited from lower to higher energy levels. And the idea is that, of course, because the energy levels have are fixed en in energy, the difference will be the same whether electrons are absorbing energy or losing energy. We then need to make the link between that energy difference and the lines. And that is uh, done by quoting the equation that we're now getting used to, delta E equals HF. Now, it may well be that in future exams, the examiner decides to ask questions on probably two of the more difficult aspects of this. And here's one particularly hard aspect. We've called it a stretch and challenge question. Uh, why do the lines in the spectrum converge or get closer together at high frequency? The kind of diagram that will help you to answer this is the one that we showed earlier on in this video, showing the energy levels getting closer together. That's the critical feature here. So how can we use that in an answer to this question? Well, we state it, and you can see it also in the diagram that we've got here. We make the point that the high frequency lines in the spectrum involve jumps of electrons from those high energy levels down to low energy levels. And so you might like to link the purple line here and the blue line here with the jumps from n equals 6 and n equals 5 down to n equals 1. What do we notice about those two lines? Well, because the n equals 6 and n equals 5 energy level 
have very similar energies, the energy gaps between n equals 6 and n equals 5 down to n equals 1 are also very similar. And if the energy gaps are very similar, the frequencies will be very similar because, of course, of our famous equation, delta E equals hf. That will get you full marks in that kind of question. And the final stretch and challenge aspect of this is talking about the groups of lines that you frequently see in a spectrum. Here, we'll need a slightly different diagram. You'll see it resembles the one we showed in the previous video, but it also shows a second set of electron jumps here. In the first set, all the electrons are jumping down to n equals 1. On the right-hand side, you can see here electrons jumping from a high energy level down to n equals 2. And the key point that you'll need to make is that each of these sets of jumps give rise to a set of lines. So what kind of ideas will come out in your written answer? Well, something like this. The electrons can jump down to a variety of different lower energy levels. You can get several transitions to the same energy level, n equals 5 to n equals 1, n equals 6 to n equals 1, and so on. Similarly, you can get several transitions to the n equals 2 level, n equals 3 to n equals 2, n equals 4 to n equals 2, n equals 5 to n equals 2. Each of those transitions produces a line, so each of these sets of transitions will produce a set of lines. And it's worth bringing in our famous equation to link together the energy gap with the frequency of the lines. One further point, you'll notice that the transitions become closer and closer in energy as you involve higher and higher electron energy levels, and therefore that these sets of lines, as we explained in the previous part of the video, will tend to converge at high frequency. So that's the end of this video, which uh, attempts to give you uh, some guidance in answering these tough questions on electron energy levels and emission spectra.